Hey YouTube, hello believers, non-believers, and all you people in between. Um, I don't know, I just feel led by the spirit to make videos. I'm really, well, I do have a few more stories to tell. Some more, uh, a few more stories. Uh, more than I, now that I'm sitting around thinking about it, and I've been listening to, <clears throat> I've been listening to um, some testimonies of people that have had, they call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened to me. And I listened to a couple of those. And it's very encouraging because then I don't feel like I'm such a weirdo. And that I'm so different. You know. Because I've told a couple of people about it in the past. And they just. They look at me funny. And one of them still makes fun of me. Um, to this day. <laughs> still makes it a point to make fun of me. And embarrass me. Or try to embarrass me. Which I'm like. You know. It's just a demon inside that person. I guess. That would want to do that just loves to harass me <clears throat> make fun of me that's okay um you know we're all going to be uh bending a knee before jesus and have to confess and um everyone's you know going to have to give an account of their self before god you know so whatever um <clears throat> so i was listening to um let's see what is i don't know her name but it's called extreme reality check also she has another channel called um supernatural um uh, slash god is not dead and she gave a testimony about her baptism in the holy spirit and it was so similar to mine <clears throat> i didn't hear i did not hear the sound of the wind but i felt the same thing she did very very similar and um you know my whole life changed and I started doing some of the same things she did and it was just really I was like wow that's so similar and it's the first time I'd ever heard her testimony so it just all it does is just um <clears throat> it just um you know gives gives it more of a um what's the word for it you know it just uh, it just explains that what happened to me happens to a lot of people. It doesn't happen to everyone the same way. Like her, her transformation was different. She's had some supernatural things happen that were similar, but they're some stuff I'd never heard of before. <clears throat> so I just, it's very, it, it really reinforces that, you know, it's one spirit. We're all his body of Christ. We're all different parts of the body. And, um, you know, it just really makes it, you know, it just reinforces that, you know, my belief and my, um, <clears throat> you know, that, you know, because people, people don't understand if they don't. And also, it's like, it's, if you don't receive it and believe it and accept what God wants to give you, he won't give it to you. You have to accept it. So it's like, <clears throat> When I received the Holy Spirit, it was the easiest thing I've ever done. It wasn't hard. It wasn't something that I had to struggle with or beg for. Or it was just, just boom, that it happened. You know, poured into me. It, you know, because it says, um, I don't know where in the Bible it says this. I can look it up. But <clears throat> in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. And it's exactly the pouring. It's, it feels like something pours into your into your body from your head to your toes it just feels like a pouring in <clears throat> and I felt that pouring in and I felt the spirit of God come inside my body and I've also seen hold on let me stop it for a minute and you know it's not just it's, some people it's not just the spirit of God people feel that that actually comes inside their body it also evil spirits um that Hirschner guy he had he gave a testimony about the Ouija board and how he became a demon possessed person you know he was a Satanist <clears throat> I, I don't remember his exact name but he gives a testimony and he talked about how he felt that spirit come inside his body it's the same thing if you feel a spirit which the Spirit of God is the most powerful thing on earth it comes inside you You're, you feel it now some people may not feel it like everyone you may be asleep when it happens or it just may not be everyone's different <clears throat> but I felt the spirit come inside my body okay it, I've never felt anything like it before that or since so um and you know I was thinking also 
Lord, please, please give me the words to say. I don't want this to be, I want this to be to your glory and only come from you. But this is what I think. I don't know if it's been revealed to me or not. I've just been feeling moved of God to talk about all this. I don't know if this is going to bless someone in particular or if it's going to help someone. But <clears throat> I had a lot of struggles. Like I've said in some of my other videos, I had a lot of struggles staying like close to God. Like I kept falling into sin. Like I kept, I kept like, it was like I would get close to God and something would say, uh, it's not going to last. I know it was a demon or the devil telling me that. It's not going to last. You're going to be right back into doing what you're doing. And <clears throat> I had a very hard childhood growing up. Um, you know, I had a lot of problems. Um, when I became a Christian, I was very young. I was only 19. I was not happy in my marriage. I had, I had all this stuff. You know, in dealing with being a young person, it's hard enough to live a Christian life when you're that miserable in your marriage and stuff. <clears throat> I had children. I, you know, I just, I don't know. I just wanted to live in the world. I wanted both. You know what I mean? You can't do it that way. It doesn't work that way. So I would get close to the Lord and it wouldn't last very long and I'd be back in the world doing what I wanted to do, but always feeling rotten about it, feeling miserable about it. So, um, but my testimony, maybe that happened, even though it wasn't God's will, it was not God's will for me to do that. But maybe God, you know, God, he can, he makes all things work together for the good of those who love him. So maybe this, all this happened for a reason, because now I have a testimony. Look at Paul. He was persecuting Christians. He was having them put to death. But he was one of the biggest mouthpieces for God. And look, he, he has a testimony. He has something to say, you know. David, he has something to say, even though he he did some horrible things. He has a testimony, and he has something to say. Okay, so sometimes God can turn a bad thing into a blessing, and for someone else, someone that's struggling with the same thing I was struggling with. I was struggling. It was it was miserable. I had a, the, the the last years of my life were miserable because of my disobedience. You know, and so um. <clears throat> My life is, God has blessed me in so many ways. And, you know, God will bless you just so that you will, he will reaffirm your faith. And it makes you such a much stronger Christian. And, and, you've, and you learn, you really do learn to believe in him. It doesn't happen overnight. You learn to have more and more faith. You learn to have more and more trust in God and what he can do. So, um, but all that happened so that I think. I hope that the Lord is in this when I say this. This is me talking. This is not biblical or this is not a scripture. This is me talking. Me. This is my opinion, okay? But it could be inspired by God. I don't know. <clears throat> you, you check yourself. You pray about it. This is what I think. <clears throat> I'm still hoarse because I was sick. Um, all that happened, me backsliding as much as I did. And... I was testing God, but not on purpose. Like I was testing the Spirit of God, but not on purpose. I would never test God's spirit, God on purpose. I, I just would never do that. But it did test. It did do a test on the Holy Spirit. When I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I backslid, and I fell. I fell pretty deep into sin. I was away from God for a long time. I mean, I always prayed and I always asked God to forgive me, but I still. I was not living a Christian life like I was like I knew better like I was supposed to. I was being I, I knew I was suffering for it too. I, things were happening and I was suffering. I lost a lot of things. I, I went through a lot of suffering because of my disobedience and not being you know just not having that relationship with God like I'm supposed to because I'm a I'm a Christian and I know better and but <clears throat> I think it happened because. I know that the Spirit of God never left me. You know, they say you're, you lose your salvation. We're, that's a bad term, losing. And I listened to another guy last night. He gave a pretty good description of what he thinks the two terms mean, losing your salvation and eternal security. But I'll go into that later. But I think that it proved, it tested the Spirit. It 
it, it was a proof that God did not leave me even in my darkest moments, even in the lo- even in, when I was doing these horrible things, which are they're embarrassing. I don't even want to talk about them. Okay, it's things that as a Christian you know better. You're not supposed to do those things, and even in those darkest, lowest points in my life, you know, the Holy Spirit never left me. I know He never left me. He was always there. I can feel the Holy Spirit in my back. I know that sounds weird, but I feel His Spirit in my body. I can feel it. And there's also a manifestation of the Spirit I'm not going to talk about that I would actually do to make sure the Spirit was still there. When I would sin so badly, and I knew I'd messed up, and I was not doing what I was supposed to do. I was not living like a Christian. And I would do this to make sure the Spirit of God was still there. And He was never left me. And it's just like I said in my last video, or the video before, I can't remember. I think it was the video before. The UFO one. You know, I never had that feeling in of the Spirit again after that first time. It never, I would think that if the Spirit of God left me like they talk about, this is one of the verses that those people that believe you can lose your salvation, they use that verse where um, Saul the Spirit of God was taken from Saul. But see, that was before Pentecost. That was before Jesus died. Okay? That wasn't... All that's Old Testament. It's not New Testament. Um, this, I believe you are sealed with the Spirit. I'm not sure if there's a threshold. But I, I think I pretty got close to that threshold where the Spirit would have left me. Okay? And He never did. He's never... Yeah, I never had that in feeling again. I never had that extraordinary change in my life like the first time that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I didn't feel that again. Jesus never left. <laughs> the Spirit of God never left me. He was always with me through everything. And He says in the Bible, He will never forsake you or leave you. He will never forsake you or leave you. Now, if the one guy was talking about we walk away from God and we can turn our back on God. We can totally, but you know what? I don't think I could totally turn my back on God. I don't think I could ever live as a non-believer after I've believed. It's almost like you can't un- unsee or unthink something. It's just there. You just, you can't go back. It's like you can't return back. You can't go back and be an unbeliever. It's, you are changed. You, there's something that happens within you um i just believe that you know you're changed you're not the same and i know that because of my experience um this is my opinion you go to prayer about it you go to god about it um but i think that my experience um and i wasn't trying to test god it just it had just happened you know my own actions but um he never left me he never once left me or forsake or forsook me and he actually reached out to me and there's some other stories i'm going to tell you he actually would make himself known to me and reach out to me even in my darkest moments he never let me forget that he loved me and that this is not the kind he, you know it's almost like are you tired of trying to live it your way now are you ready to do it my way are you ready are you miserable enough you know and I was it's 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 a miserable life being away from the Lord and not living according to God's will it is and I, I prayed ever since I became a Christian God show me what I need to do where what do I need to do for the kingdom of God what is my role what is my job what what can I do and he's revealed it to me and I'm not going to talk about it but I believe this is what he revealed to me. So <clears throat> I'm going to be doing that. So God bless you. Um, I pray any of you don't know the Lord, just talk to the just talk to the Lord. Just say, Jesus, if you're real, will you reveal yourself to me? Will you save me? Will you fill me with your spirit? And you know what? He will. If you are open to it, he will. And even if you're not open to it, ask God to open you up to it you know it's and he will he really will God bless you pray for you you need prayer let me know um okay thanks bye